Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Tutorials. Um, I should say first up, before I even start, if you can hear a little dog barking crazily, I shall say that that is not my dog, it is my neighbour's dog who has chosen this precise moment to completely lose its mind. So um, <laughs> with that said, what we're going to do is make one of these gorgeous um, crochet wind spinners with possibly the biggest, fattest tassel you've ever seen in your life. Um, have a look at this little video here. This is the wind spinner in action, of course. Um, they are just a magnificent thing and such a fantastic project to make to get rid of your little scrap pieces of yarn. Of course, not tiny weeny scrap pieces, but any half balls you might have, these are absolutely perfect. They are a great thing because you can color them in any color scheme you like. Um, and they make a wonderful decoration. So they're a great decoration for a house generally. Um, but of course you can make Christmas ones, you can make Halloween ones with sort of orange and black and white. Um, you can make ones for little babies' nurseries that hang at different levels and maybe even spin around on a mobile if you'd like. Um, and so there's so many different applications for this particular way of making this. Now, of course, it is literally just a big curl of crochet and it's really easy to make. Um, just to let you know, I've actually, um, on the, the piece that is hanging it, I have included a little uh, a little loop just to hang it on whatever hook is in your roof or whatever pole you've got, like maybe on a window, um, and one of these little fishing swivels. So that just helps it to, to move more freely. But you'll find that if you only use one um, thread rather than um, a, a loop that comes directly from the actual uh, wind spinner, then you'll find that it will qu spin quite freely without the fishing spinner, uh, fishing swivel. But I had them lying around, so I thought, why not incorporate it into here and enable that spin just to be a little more smooth? Um, all right, so it is really super easy to do. You'll be making thousands of these, I assure you, and the tassel. Again, super easy. So we'll have a look at how to do the whole thing from beginning to end. The first thing you need to do is select a hook that goes with your yarn. So it doesn't really matter what yarn you use. You could use chunky yarn. You could use a finer yarn. Of course, whatever hook, uh, yarn you use, you will definitely get a different sized product. For this, um, for this one here, I've just used a DK yarn. It's an eight ply in Australia, but a in other areas, you probably call it a DK or potentially a light worsted. Um, it is around the um, 50 to 60 centimetres long mark, not, of course, including the, um, what do you call this, the hanging piece. <laughs> um, and it, it, it's a great size yarn for that. Any yarn will be absolutely fabulous as long as your hook really matches. And the great thing about this is that the, there are so few rules. So um, this one I actually uh, chained 70 for my initial chain. But again, you can chain whatever size you like. The longer the chain, the longer your wind spinner. Um, of course, the more stitches you'll have to do, but that tends to not bother us. Um, so here, what I've done is I have chained 50. This is a chain of 50 for my initial chain. And the way this works is that we always work from the bottom up. So rather than, I mean, you can, I guess, just turn here and, and crochet back. But what we're going to do is just cut that off and work that end in later. And then come back to the start here. And... You'll, you'll be able to figure out which end your start is on. It, it's not difficult to determine which end is which, but if you have any issues figuring it out, just, um, you know, pop a little knot in one end or whatever to be able to 
to tell. Um, but then we grab our next colour. And for my neck, I'm actually making, I should mention, I'm actually making a Christmassy themed one. So I've got white for my initial um, chain. And then I'm going to be using this. I'm not sure if you can see that that's a really light mint green. Um, and then the Christmassy green, which is just this like bargain acrylic yarn um, that I bought thinking it would be great, but it's it's actually not. It's really quite stretchy and um, doesn't kind of work for many applications, but it'll work for this. So, And uh, lovely Christmassy red. So they're my colours I'm picking. You can pick as many colours as you like. You can do it in, in one solid colour if you like. There are few rules to this particular piece. But you just need, once you've created your chain and tied it off on the end, come back to the beginning and pop a slip knot on your hook and then go into that first chain and just make a single crochet and then we literally are going to single crochet into every chain along until we get to the end so it is just one single crochet into every chain. Of course, in the UK, you know that as a double crochet, but with US terminology, that is a single crochet. So you're going in, you're yarning over, you're picking up a loop, you're yarning over and you're pulling through two. Simplest stitch there is in crochet. Um, and all the way along for that. And it, it really doesn't take long. You know, certainly if you've chained 300 then it might but I'm not sure how long that wind spinner would end up it will probably end up touching the floor um, but yes you can see that we're going to go all the way along with that single crochet all the way along the chain so once I finish that I'll meet you at the end okay so I am on my very last stitch here I'm just going to put that last single crochet in there and then as we did with the chain, I'm just going to fasten that color off. And that is my chain and single crochet round. So once again, when we add the new color, we'll be starting from this end where we began with the chain and where we began with the single crochet. So for this round, what we've just done is, we can see on, on this one here, I've done a chain in white and then a chain in, uh, sorry, and then the single crochet in white as well. Um, and then I've used the uh, light pink, I guess you'd call that, and then the sort of dusky pink and then the, the hot pink. So um, for me, because I have just used the mint colour, I'm actually going to use this dark green, darker green for my next round. And that is a double crochet round. Of course, in the UK, you'll know that as a treble crochet. Um, but in US terminology, it is a double. And again, pop a slip knot on the hook. I just go into this first stitch and just chain three the way you would normally to get to the height of any double crochet. And then we're actually going to put another one directly in there. And that's what we're going to do for this entire row is we're going to put two double crochets into each of those single crochets from the previous round. And that will start to give us this lovely curl. Um, so it's just two double crochets into each stitch. One and two. All the way along. So next stitch, two double crochets. Next stitch, two double crochets. And so on until you reach the end. And again, once we're at the end, we're going to cut off the way we did with the single crochet round. So I'll meet you at that end. Okay, so I'm at the end here and I've just got my last 
two double crochets to do in this final stitch one and two and then lose my loop that was not meant to happen um, fasten that off and you can see already it's starting to curl. Um, it looks a bit mucky and that's okay. Don't even worry about it. Um, see, look at this, joins. That, this is why I hate this particular yarn and why it's sitting in the scrap pile. There was two in not very far away from each other. So thanks whoever made that yarn. Um, all right. So again, we're going back to the beginning with our next colour. And for me, I kind of really like this um, this mint colour, so I'm going to put that back on there. Um, I could use the white. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. You can make it purple and green and orange if you like. Um, sorry to all those people who love purple and green and orange. I just tried to think of three colours that potentially aren't the best together. Um... That's me being judgy. I'm terribly sorry. All right, so again, we're going to join um, with a slip knot on the hook, but we're going to go into the top of this chain three um, and just join with a little slip stitch. And again, chain three. For this round, we're actually going to put three double crochets into each stitch. So that chain three counts as one um, and then two more in that one and then we're going to go straight into the next stitch with three double crochets again and this is going to really make this curl so three double crochets into each stitch so one two and three and all the way along. So because I've chained 50, that effectively means that with three in each stitch, um, I'm going to end up doing 150 of these double crochets up the side here. But it doesn't matter, your stitch count really doesn't matter in this because if you happen to put two in one and four in another, it really is not going to be noticeable. Which is what's so fantastic about this little project. So I've got three in there and three in the next one. I'm going to meet you once again at the end and put in our final stitches, cut off again and then start our last round. Okay so here I am at this very last stitch that I just need to put the three double crochets in to complete this row and that is done. Now again of course we're just going to tie off and I'm sure you're looking at this thinking holy heck that's a mess but don't worry it, it is. <laughs> I'm going to admit at this stage it is a mess um, but it will get better. Um, we just need to do a bit of manipulation there. So back to the beginning we go for our next colour. And my next colour is actually going to be the red. This is the last colour. So if you wanted to do another round, um, then make uh, another round but put four double crochets into each stitch. Um and but it it would make a, a chunkier um, sort of circle, I guess, in your spinning segments. Um, but the three rows, single crochet, two double crochet, three double crochet is the basis of this. As you can see, it's quite curly enough now. And to finish it off, what we're going to do is just add a row of single crochet. But I just want to caution you with this because when I made this one, um, this sort of hot pink colour, um, it's actually quite a stretchy yarn like this green one. Um, there's just a lot of stretch in it. And, and when you, and you know how it is when you, when you make a stitch and you can feel that stretch within that stitch. And... Um, as you can see, the, it kind of, 
it'd help if I had it in the camera frame. It kind of has made the edge of the of each sort of round just curl in a tiny bit. And that's because the way this round works is we actually only put one stitch into each stitch. So it's one single crochet in each stitch along. But to avoid this, um, make sure you're this kind of, you can see there, it's kind of curling up. Make sure your yarn isn't a stretchy yarn, um, number one, and that you don't do the little tug to complete your um, single crochet. And I'll just show you what I mean. So we're at the beginning here. This is where I made my chain three in the very beginning. So I'm going to go into the top of that chain three and just place a single crochet. And normally, you know, you'd kind of probably tug that right down, but that's what we want to avoid um, for this. So just let it sit and into the next stitch and let your single crochet sit. Don't tug it down. You can, um, and I actually, when, when this is hanging up, as you can see from the video, it looks magnificent. There is nothing wrong with this slight curl at the edge. Um, but if you do want your fans to be a little bit flatter, then not tugging down on your single crochet on the edge here is the answer to that. Um, and But if you're anything like me, you're a creature of habit and it's really hard to resist doing that tug. See, I almost did it then. Um, and then. Um, <laughs> so just a single crochet all the way along this. So one into each of your stitches. And just that word of caution about don't tug it down um, really tight. Otherwise, it will curl your... Um, your rounds but you know it may curl a little bit anyway so do whatever's comfortable as I said the the curl as you can see here you can see it quite more a little bit more pronounced there when it's hanging up it isn't an issue as you can see on the video so I will meet you when we get to the end of this round okay so when you get to the end of that single crochet round um, and you've put your last stitch in just yarn over and pull quite a long tail because this is actually going to be your hanging string so put quite a long tail on that however long you want that hanging string to be um, for me of course I'd be using um, the swivel in there as well as a little loop on the end um, but that is the wind spinner crochet part done. So, of course, we need to get it into, into shape, essentially, because this one at the moment is all tangled, and whereas this one's nice, and everyone's facing the same way. So, essentially, all we do is just start at the end and start kind of wrapping it around. So we want to just keep following that shape. And once, when you find that you need to adjust it, then adjust it. But we need to just keep following that round shape and make sure that everything, that they all line up with each other. Try not to bunch them up too small uh, because otherwise you'll get some segments of the spinner that are smaller than others and you don't want to go out to start flaring out too wide either. Um, but yet yeah, we're just working it around until we've curled up that entire spinner. Of course, if yours is longer than mine, then that's going to take you a little bit longer. 
but that is the end product. So everyone should be facing the same way. And these ends at the bottom, they all of course need to be sewn away and your ends at the top need to be sewn away except for your long, excuse me, except for your long um, hanging end. So I'll just sew those away and then we'll come back and we'll look at how to make this fantastic tassel. Now, um, this is Christmassy, so if you're making a Christmas one, you don't need a tassel. You can hang baubles and some tinsel on it. Um, if you were doing maybe a Valentine's one, crochet a heart, hang that on the bottom. Um, or if you were doing ones for children, then you might uh, make tiny little amigurumi animals like a little chicken or um, a little bear and hang those on the bottom really is up to you but how to make the tassel the tassel kind of goes with everything um, and and I'm going to put a Christmas looking tassel on this one so I'll just sew in these ends just using a normal yarn needle and I'll meet you when I'm done Okay, so the ends are sewn in, um, and this is my little wind spinner. Um, what we're going to do is make this tassel, and as you can see, this is possibly the plumpest tassel on the face of the earth, and I kind of really like a plump tassel, but you can make your tassel as pudgy or as slender as you like. Um, this is, I just like it because it's nice and it's quite substantial. So I'm going to probably make a, a plump one again. Um, but essentially what I did here is just, I took the three main colors. So excluding the white from um, the, the actual body of the wind spinner, I took the light pink, the dark pink and the kind of hot pink and just made the tassel with those three colors. So that's what I'm going to do with these. So I've got my mint green, the red and the dark green. And I'll just move you out of the way for a second. And then I've got this and it, you don't have to have one of these. This is just the kind of length that I wanted the tassel. Um, so however long you want your tassel, find something that is about as wide as that, but you don't want it too thick. Um, so this is actually just a box for a computer hard drive that needed to be replaced. Um, but it works perfectly for this application. And then just lay the... Um, the yarn over that and start wrapping and as I said you can make it as thick or as slender as you like um, but you know certainly um, you will be guided I guess by the how high well how big you want your tassel um, but I just wrap 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 and keep wrapping until I think that it's um, chunky enough. Remembering that once I take it off this box, these two sides come together. So, um, you know, yes, it's quite chunky there. And this is probably one more wrap, maybe. All right, two. Can't help myself, can I? Um, and then just... Find your scissors, Kim, and cut it off. Here they are. Um, all right, so we'll cut that off there. And then that's that. And what I'm going to do is just grab another uh, length of this, um, the three strands together. So, you know, maybe 40, 50 centimetres, doesn't really matter. Just another length of it um, to be able to wrap, to make this collar around the um, tassel is the word I'm looking for. Crikey, I am literally losing all my words today. And then gently ease this off your template. And do try and keep it all together. Okay, so once you've got it off, you've got this kind of loop of um, 
yarns just pop it down for a sec and just not your collar that you grabbed just grab any piece of yarn um, I'm just going to grab a piece of green and we're just going to thread it through there and tie a knot keep all those pieces together now I like to tie I'm not exactly sure what this knot's called um, maybe a chef's knot um, but just pass it through there a couple of times um, and as you can see it's not a granny knot um, it's a much more stable knot and then just do that again and oh and your yarn breaks which is actually quite okay because I was probably going to cut it off anyway um but thanks yarn there's another reason to not like that yarn i'm racking up those reasons aren't i just put that in the body and then we're ready to put our collar on our tassel so just leave a little end like that find exactly where you want its i guess shoulders to be um and generally, you know, you only have a small amount at the top and then the rest is the lovely tassel. So, and just start wrapping. And you want to wrap that quite tight um, because, you know, the tighter you make this collar, the, the better the tassel looks, really. Um, plump him out a little bit in the top. And then what we're going to do, once you don't want that to be too puffy, the collar, so that's quite all right. What I'm going to do is just get these ends. Hopefully I can thread them all through this needle without having to switch to a bigger one. Yep. Yay. And then just go up and over and pass them through into the bottom of that tassel. Pull on them like that and then with the other end we're going to do the same thing so just thread them I thought that one was going to give me trouble then but it didn't and thread them into the body of the tassel pull the ends through And then we're free to cut. And we're going to cut the bottom. Make sure it's all even and then come and trim these ends on the bottom. So we get a nice flat bottomed tassel. Now we have an end here. Um, this is the end that I think didn't snap. Um, so when we go, when we bring in our actual wind spinner, what I'm going to do is just thread this onto there and you can attach it to this bottom piece if you like, or you can attach it to this corner. I like to attach it to the corner because it kind of stretches that out rather than coming up in here and laying the tassel across that. So entirely up to you though. We, you can do one or you can do the other. It really doesn't matter. But we're just going to tie it in like that and just make sure it's quite secure. And that's the tassel on the bottom of the wind spinner. Again, of course, this um, end needs to just come back and go and live inside that tassel. And then you will find that your tassel is complete. 
So that is the completed wind spinner um, with the tassel. Um, if you find that your wind spinner looks a bit weird, just bunch it up again and just make sure that all of the the coils are, are coiled in the same direction because if they're not coiled in the same direction, then it will look weird. But as long as they're all coiled in the same direction, when you hang it, um, and that one isn't coiled in the same direction, when you hang it, um, it will sit out beautifully and everyone will be happy and sitting next to each other. So um, that is the wind spinner. Um, again, baubles look great on the bottom, um, little hearts or whatever, for whatever occasion you're making them. This is just one of the coolest things in crochet at the moment. I do hope you make the crochet wind spinner. I will see you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed already, please take a moment to do so. And I do hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time.